In this lecture video, we will talk about the requirements engineering process. We are just going to talk about the high level view of the engineering process. We're going to study more about each of the phases in this requirements engineering process in the upcoming lecture videos. Requirements engineering process may include up to four high level activities. The first one is called as the feasibility study. If you look at the diagram on the slide, you can see this here. Feasibility study is all about assessing if the system is feasible. It's an analysis of the proposed project to determine whether it is feasible to implement it and if we should go ahead with implementing, designing and implementing this project. Feasibility study could include economic feasibility, technical feasibility, risk analysis, operational feasibility, schedule feasibility to see if timeline estimation and optimization of resources can be done successfully and so on. The next high level activity is called as requirements elicitation and analysis. This is all about discovering requirements. The third high level activity is called as requirement specification where the requirements that were discovered in the second high level activity are converted into a more standard form. And the last phase or the last high level activity is called requirements validation, where the requirements are checked if they actually define the system and what the customer wants. In practice, requirements engineering is an iterative process in which all these activities are interleaved. Let's look at the diagram on the side at the left hand side of the slide. So you can see that the activities are organized as an iterative process around a spiral with the output being a systems requirement document. Let's look at the spiral view of the requirements engineering process. So if we start from here, you can see that at the first point, we start with the business requirement specification. So what are business requirements? Business requirements describe why an organization is undertaking the project in the first place. They state some benefits that the developing organization or its customers expect to receive from the project. Business requirements may be delineated in several documents, such as a business case, a project vision, scope statements, and so on. If we continue with the spiral here, the next would be the feasibility study. Feasibility study would be to assess if the prop proposed software system is feasible to design and implement. It could be checking if the risks are manageable, if the budget is okay and it can be developed without having high costs, unexpectable or unreasonable costs and timing requirements or constraints and so on. If we continue through the spiral, we will have the next activity that is the user requirements elicitation. We already know what are user requirements. User requirements are what the users are going to do with the system. It may talk about what the user does with the system, such as what activities the user must be able to perform with the system. User requirements are also documented in a user requirements document. User requirements are generally signed off by the user and used as the primary input for creating system requirements. Elicitation is a process of gathering this user requirements by having constant interaction with customers and users and so on. If you move along the spiral, from the user requirements elicited here, you prepare the user requirement specification document. If we move again towards the spiral, once you have the requirement specification of the user, you build prototypes or models to understand these requirements in detail so that based on the user requirements, you can develop or find out system requirements. System requirements are more detailed developer-oriented requirements as we have already understood from the previous lecture video. Once you have this in detail, we develop another document called as the SRS or System Requirement Specification Model. Continuing in the spiral, if we do this, finally what we do is we review the entire requirements document and the outcome of this requirement engineering process is the system requirements document 
or the System Requirement Specification, also known as SRS. If you take a look at the spiral, the entire spiral view is actually divided into three phases. The first important phase is Requirements Elicitation, where the main job here is to gather requirements, find requirements, sometimes maybe by interviewing with the customers, sometimes maybe just by observing how customers use software, a software system, and so on. Once you have found out the requirements, the next phase is the requirement specification, where we actually document these requirements in details. The next phase would be validating and checking if these requirements are really feasible and can be implemented, reviewing it constantly to arrive at the final document called as the SRS or the SRD. If you look at the spiral model, you can see initially we start with high level requirements such as business requirements. As we go on, as we add more spirals, we can see that we go to detailed system requirements or detailed system uh, level requirements. We have already understood that user requirements are more high level written in a natural language which is understandable to the user or the client who is going to use the system. Whereas system requirements are more detailed specification of the requirements, what a developer has to implement, what exact features have to be provided in the system. So you can see the spiral begins with a high level, simpler view, and with each spiral, you're going to add more detail and come with the system level implementation. So this is about the spiral view of the requirements engineering process. Let's learn a little about the requirements engineering process. The amount of time and effort devoted to each activity in each iteration depends on the stage of the overall process and the type of the software system being developed. Early in the process, as we have already seen, the innermost spirals, more effort will be spent on understanding the high level business non-functional requirements the user requirements for the system, and so on. Later in the process, that is, in the outer rings of the spiral, more effort will be devoted towards eliciting and understanding the detailed system requirements. The number of iterations around the spiral can vary, so the spiral can be exited after some or all of the user requirements have been elicited. If you're using agile development, it can be used instead of prototyping, so that the requirements and the system implementation are developed side by side. Agile requirement or agile engineering is a process where you accommodate changing requirements from the customer. It is more realistic. Customers, when they first come to the developer, they themselves will not know what they want from the system exactly because they may not be technical people. They may be laymen coming with an idea of what they want. All the requirements may not be specified in the first interaction. Many of the requirements or changes to the requirements may come only when the software system or one increment of the system has been given to the customer or a prototype has been given to the customer. He works with this prototype and says and requests for more changes, modifications, new technology upgrades, and so on. Agile software development is a method or a process which allows you to accommodate these changing requirements. Requirements elicitation, if you see, is a completely human-centered activity. Here, you're gonna actually sit and talk to the customer and understand his requirements. That is, after an initial feasibility study of assessing if the proposed system is actually feasible and reasonable to design and implement, the next stage of the requirements engineering process is nothing but the requirements elicitation. In this activity, the software engineers will work with customers and system end users to find out about the application domain, what services the system should provide, the, requirement perform the required performance of the system, hardware constraints, timing constraints, budgetary constraints, and so on. In virtually all systems, requirements tend to change. The people involved develop a better understanding of what they want from the software the organization buying the system may change. Modifications are made to the system's hardware, software, and the organizational environment itself. 
This entire process of managing these changing requirements is called as requirements management. We will talk about requirements management in detail in another upcoming lecture video. We will also talk about the different ways of requirements elicitation in another upcoming lecture video. So in this lecture video, you have understood a brief or a high level working of the requirements engineering process. We have seen the spiral view of the process and we have seen how there are four high level or major activities in this process, which include feasibility study, where you understand if the proposed system is feasible to implement, requirements elicitation, where you gather requirements from various fields, requirement specification, where you convert the gathered requirements into a standard form, and requirements validation, where you check if your requirements that are specified and taken down from the customers actually do, actually, you know, confirm to the system that is being developed. We've also understood that the end product or the outcome of the requirements engineering process is a standard system requirement specification document, also called as the SRS. Thank you.